Neuro Nation, Emily Morgan here, co-founder of NeuroVlog. This is Sarah. Hello. And if you've seen my videos before, you've probably seen Sarah included in them. She's been my patient demo. Sarah has actually been my level two occupational therapy student for the last three months. Yep. And today is actually her last day. So pretty devastated to lose her, but I know she's going on to better things at her next field work. But I just wanted to have a conversation to the audience and with Sarah about um, a couple things that have been coming up during our time together when we've been trying to plan for interventions for our neurological clients. Specifically, about how you can use electrical stimulation concurrently with other treatments that you're doing. And essentially, it's working smarter, not harder. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I always feel like our toolbox is just so heavy with interventions that we could use on our neurological patients, especially our stroke clients, our spinal cord injuries, our brain injuries. There are a lot of efficacious treatment interventions and approaches out there. There are also not very good ones that we should probably avoid using when possible. But when it comes to electrical stimulation, eSTEM is uh, regarded as a level 1A evidence when it comes to restoring motor recovery in our clients. And a lot of our neurological uh, clients need that electrical stimulation and if they don't have it at home then they're going to have to of course do it when they're in therapy with us. Now we don't want to be practitioners where we just set up the modality of the electrical stimulation walk away, it becomes unattended, we're not able to bill as much of course, and it's just not good therapy. But what we do want to do is overlap concurrently electrical stimulation with some of the efficacious interventions and approaches that we want to, to, to do, those um, interventions that are on our list. So we're gonna show you in this one video four different ways that you can utilize eSTEM in a very smart way so the client gets more out of it, so that you're reducing costs overall for uh, the greater good of healthcare. And of course, it is just going to make you um, a better therapist, a, a more effective therapist, because you'll be able to learn how to uh, multitask your interventions as long as you just prepare a little bit in advance. I'm gonna show you how right now. Here is one way that you can kill two birds with one stone. In this example, I'll be talking about combining mirror box therapy with electrical stimulation. Now mirror box therapy, of course, is the use of a mirror that creates a reflective illusion of an affected limb in order to trick the brain into thinking movement has occurred. It creates positive visual feedback of limb movement. This is used quite a bit in stroke rehabilitation, brain injury rehabilitation, and even when treating phantom limb pain. Now Sarah is wearing electromesh garment technology. And this is going to deliver sensory electrical stimulation, or SES, to the arm and the hand. If she places it inside the mirror box and then puts her less affected limb on the table, Sarah can do mirror therapy exercises while she is experiencing the electrical stimulation coming from the electromesh garment. SES has been shown to improve sensory and motor function of the upper limb. In addition to SES, you can use NMES, in other words, neuromuscular electrical stimulation. So in this example, you can see that the surface electrodes are placed on the wrist extensors, which should facilitate wrist extension. So Sarah is going to put her affected limb into the mirror box. And as the stimulation is running, she can perform mirror therapy with both hands at the same time.
The final example I wanted to show you is how you can use functional electrical stimulation through a wireless orthosis while concurrently performing mirror therapy. I have a lot of clients who have very low tone or they might have quite a bit of spasticity and this neuromodulation program works excellent to encourage rewiring in the brain and it's a great priming tool before we actually begin our occupation-based care or task-oriented training exercises with the hand. So Sarah can place her hand inside of the mirror box and she's just getting great information to her brain as the stimulation is doing her thing and she can continue doing the exercises that are prescribed for her mirror therapy program. This is example number two of smart ways to utilize electrical stimulation concurrently to other treatments. So what you see here is Sarah demonstrating what we call the wedge stretch. A lot of our clients with stroke and brain injury often end up in internal rotation, flexor synergy patterns. A great way to break up some of that soft tissue tightness is to put them on a wedge with a foam roll arrange vertically down their spine, and then a shorter form roll running horizontally in their lumbar spine. Really opens them up nicely. And of course you see a pillow propped here, and then her shoulder is appropriate, appropriately placed in just a little bit of abduction. We're trying to get that external rotation. This is done for about five minutes at a time. And while we're doing this, we can be doing electrical stimulation. So in this example, we are running the functional electrical stimulation wireless orthosis on the neuromodulation program, just like in the last video. This is a very good use of therapy time because she's benefiting from the soft tissue stretch, but she's also getting lots of good information to her brain to rewire what we need so we can prepare for functional activity and restoration later on. No, Sarah is not sleeping and taking a nap. What she is actually doing is performing mental practice through podcast audio files. Mental practice is an efficacious way to mentally rehearse the activity or the action without it actually being performed. There is a great deal of research on mental practice. Therapists should be utilizing mental practice as part of their treatment interventions when working with clients who have upper extremity and lower extremity limitations. It is practiced very often, of course, in sports psychology uh, and even in the performing arts. If you want to improve your performance, mentally rehearse what you're going to do. So the same rules apply in rehabilitation. Now this video is not about how to do mental practice, but just to showcase that if you are utilizing mental practice as part of your therapy interventions, you can overlay electrical stimulation like the SES electromesh glove shown here. You can also utilize a cyclic NMES or you can use a wireless orthosis on the neuromodulation program. I wouldn't try to get too crazy where the client has to do a whole lot, otherwise it could distract them from the mental practice activities itself. But if you feel as a clinician this is appropriate to prescribe and they would benefit from doing both things at the same time to make their, the intervention more concise and perhaps eliminate all the time it might take to uh, do these activities separately, consider overlaying mental practice and any form of electrical stimulation that suits the client best. My final example is how you can combine any intervention. It could be occupation-based interventions, task-specific training, cognitive rehab, or even vision, while the client is experiencing stimulation to their shoulder, utilizing this for a subluxation protocol. Many times in the care, if I identify that someone has a subluxation, I'm going to put 
the electrical stimulation on them. And this is just one example. There are a couple different devices that can be used and a couple different placements. I'm going to put it on them at the start of their care and run it for at least 60 minutes if I have that much time with them while they're doing all the other activities that I would have them be doing anyway. Again, this is good use of their time, good use of uh, combining interventions. And I think if you consider using this, you'll be thrilled because the client is going to experience double the results. So there you have it, four smart ways to utilize electrical stimulation concurrently during all the other great treatments you're already using. Get creative with it. And if you have any ideas yourself, Neural Nation, be sure to comment in the video below. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you later.